Hello, I'm Riccardo Porrini. I'm engineering lead at Kaleido.ai. Um, today I'm gonna, I want to share with you how we do software engineering at Kaleido. And most specifically and most particularly, how our engineering organization looks like and also the journey, the journey that brought us to this organization. But first, a couple of words uh, about us, about Kaleido. You may know us. Uh, our mission is to make visual AI simple. And we started this journey and we started uh, uh, pursuing this mission by working on uh, automatically removing backgrounds from photos. This is a tedious work. And this is something that uh, if you try to do with uh, um, by hand, uh, it's very complicated. It's a very long process. So we tackled the, that problem and we solved with, and we're still solving it with, with AI, basically, machine learning powered models. Um, then we focused also on uh, applying and solving the same problems, but uh, applied to videos. So we, dev so we built uh, a, a product that is called uh, Unscreen. And recently we built Designify. Uh, which is a, a, a tool, a product that create that uh, allows uh, our users to create a design from photo images, all powered by our AI magic. And yeah, and recently we joined the Canva family. Uh, Canva is an online design and publishing tool uh, with a mission uh, that is to empower the world to design anything from everywhere, publishing everywhere, um, and empowering anyone to do so. Yeah, this is a um, couple of words about us, um, and let's get dig and let's um, let's dig deeper into how our uh, engineering organization works and how it is and, and and what is what was our process to come to this organization. Um, we in the past years had a lot of growth, so growth related to product. So more products, uh, growth in user base. And, and so as an engineering organization, our mission is to sustain this growth and to sustain the products. So the engineering organization grows as the overall organization and product works. And we are always, oh, and oh, uh, we, we have always tried to find the, the, the best way of organizing our work to sustain this growth, so to make it sustainable and to, for the foreseeable future. Um, today, I want to share this journey with you. And this journey starts by the only way it gets started. It can get started by a single engineering team. Um, you start from a bunch of engineers, um, small, team, a single team um, that includes, uh, that at the time it included uh, from all the specialties from 10 backend application engineers, but most importantly, also machine learning engineers. You know, machine learning, uh, given our mission to make AI, visual AI simple and accessible for everyone, machine learning is a key differentiator in what we do and how we do this. The, our ability to uh, build, refine, and then deploy complex machine learning models, uh, it is what uh, uh, made us successful so far. So it made completely sense to have a single team at the moment, at, at that point in time, a single team that includes included all the engineers. Um, and this is a good way to start because within the, within the single team you have uh, it's easy to find alignment on uh, engineering practices. It's easier. Um, then you scale. Then you want to scale. Then you want to add more engineers to the team. Uh, and you reach a point uh, where, um, and we found this typically being like in between six and eight engineers, uh, when the team grows um, over the six, eight engineers, you are, you start to place too much communication overhead. You start to have 
too much communication overhead within the team, coordinating the work becomes more difficult because coordinating the work, of, the more people they join, the more difficult it is to coordinate things together, uh, coordinate people together. Um, so we had to split and we, we initially split uh, the team into two different specialty teams. Um, and this was the most natural thing to do. Uh, also because the team was very, was, was, um, um, I would say young, recently formed. So we still had to align on engineering practices and also find a way to do things right. And it's easier to do so if you have specialty teams so that group uh, front end and back end engineers together and machine learning engineers together. So that internally they can uh, find the best way on how to align on engineering practices that make us, make us uh, successful. Um, and this is fine. Uh, then you realize over the time that you are creating uh, what is called the horizontal knowledge silos. So, uh, and as a, as a result of this, teams are not autonomous in, uh, in working on the products. Uh, because creating a product, a comple complex product, uh, requires actually work uh, from, uh, cross-functional work is, is called, right? Requires work from, uh, coordinating work from, uh, uh, that ranges from front end to back end, to machine learning engineers, uh, to DevOps, to quality assurance, and so on and so forth. And if you split this knowledge to, uh, into different teams, uh, those teams are not autonomous and they have to align outside the team to pursue their goals and their mission. So this is a structure that allows you to form uh, the core engineering practices as you're starting. But as you want to scale even further, um, you need to have a slightly different organization, organi organization of the teams. And that's what the, the, what we came to. Um, we call it product teams. We organize the, 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 the teams into different products teams. So every product team is responsible end to end for the product that, um, they work on. And this is a, the best structure to create empowered teams because they can work on a problem. They can solve problems and they are autonomous in solving it. Um, so they, they have a goal. They up, they're up to a mission, they figure out, and they have little as possible dependencies uh, towards other teams. This is a way for being effective. Um, and it constitutes the, uh, the basic building block for you to scale over more product teams. In the future, they can become feature teams instead of product team when the product becomes more complex. But this is the, the way of doing it. Um, and when you scale even further, you run into um, some organizational issues, not organiz proper organizational issues, but technical issues. So this uh, structure, this is st a structure that helps and constitutes the building block for scaling up to when you realize uh, that you ha then that you have uh, shared infrastructure. And by, sh by infrastructure, I mean, production infrastructure, um, where the systems and, and, and services and products are deployed and so on and so forth, uh, tools for continuous integration, continuous deployments that have underlying um, engineering practices that have to be shared between the teams. So now you have teams that are separated and aligning towards those engineering practices gets a little bit harder because then all the teams is are finding the best way of doing of doing their work locally because they want to optimize they have a goal um, so there's a, a, a we found a solution for this um, the next step for scaling uh, it's uh, to build is to build a platform team or more than one platform team um, this is the foundation for scaling even further because if you build the platform a platform team whose goal is to build tools to promote engineering practices and, and you give this team a clear ownership of the shared infrastructure, they can become the, um, uh, the, uh, the ones who empower the pro who empower product teams. They build tools for them to, to build their products. 
uh, and they agree with them on engineering practices and they bake those engineering embed those good engineering practices in the tool that they that they create so in a way the customers of a platform team are not end users of our products instead are, are other engineers the key point about a platform team when you create it though, is to um, really focus on automation and tools. Always keep in mind that uh, you, the mission of the platform team is to empower product teams uh, to be successful so and not to be a bottleneck. So first of all, if you focus on automation uh, and you give, out, uh, you give product teams the right automatic tools to do their work, and so, you don't, uh, and so the team is not a bottleneck anymore. Basically, this is a structure that constitutes the foundation for further scaling because then you have shared infrastructure, building engineering practices and tools that can evolve and then you can sustain the growth, adding more and more product teams. And basically, this is our current organization, when we, uh, how we reach this organization. Um, as we are scaling, still scaling, we will never stop scaling, as, both from a people perspective and engineer, but also from um, a system perspective, so product perspective. Um, this is the structure that we feel right now has the more chance to being adaptable and to provide adaptation for us as we are going to scale. There will be um, um, more challenges in scaling that we, that we are going to face, but with this structure, we have the right building blocks, at least we, we, we feel that we have the right building blocks, to keep adapting, keep scaling, and keep pursuing our goal, our mission, which is to make a visual AI simple. And this is it for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the, 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 our journey to get here. Um, thank you very much. Um, and one last word, uh, we are hiring. So, uh, so visit our career page to find out more and get in touch with us. Thank you.